Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I want to talk to you about intersecting masks in Lightroom. It's something that I think is underutilized, but it's very powerful. When you intersect two masks in Lightroom, any adjustments you do will only be applied where those two masks overlap. Let me show you. I have this image here, and let's just say that I want to add haze to the background. Well, that's easy enough to do in Lightroom. We'll open up masking, we'll select the background, We'll go down to FX, we'll go to the dehaze slider, and of course if I move it to the right, I'm removing haze, but if I move it to the left, I'm adding haze. And you can see it's doing a great job of adding haze, but it doesn't look natural because the haze is uniform from the top to the bottom, front to back. It's good though, it's not affecting the model at all. But what I could do is I could intersect this mask with a linear gradient. Linear gradient will make it look more natural, and because I'm intersecting the linear gradient with the background mask, the effect will only be applied to the background and it won't touch the model at all. Let me show you. Go up to mask one, click on the three little dots, go down to intersect mask with. You can see you could intersect it with any type of mask available in Lightroom. We'll use that linear gradient and then we'll go towards the top and draw down. Now you'll see that it looks more natural. The haze is heavier in the background lighter in the midground and not applied at all in the foreground and of course because we're intersecting the two masks it's not affecting the model at all so this looks much more natural and much better let's try another one i really like this image but her face is a bit dark now i could use a people mask and brighten her skin but we have directional light here the light's coming in from the window and if i just brighten her skin uniformly i don't think it would look natural because the tip of her nose should be brighter than the area that's by her temple plus her bangs would probably be a little bit brighter as well so what we could do is we could intersect two different types of masks here now i'm just going to select the subject and let's just say like i mentioned i wanted to brighten it you can see how it uniformly brightens everything but I'm going to intersect this mask with a brush. So we'll click on the three dots. We'll go down to intersect mask with, and we'll choose brush. Now I want to make sure that feather is at a hundred. The feathering part of the brush is the area of the brush between the inner circle and the outer circle. That's where it's feathered. And I want to do is what I want to do is I just want to kind of kiss her face with that feathered brush like that, just to brighten up that area there and it makes it look a little more natural. And you can see it's only affecting where I brushed and where that brush intersects or overlaps with the original subject mask. So you can see that that looks a lot more natural. There's before and there's after. Now you can see, look at her fingers. I accidentally caught her fingers there, the backside of her fingers. I don't think those would be bright. Adding and subtracting from your intersected masks works as well so we could subtract with a brush and then with this minus brush we could come in and remove the adjustment from where we accidentally applied it but it's still being applied to her face so again there is before and there's after let's try another one this image has a lot of dappled light and our subjects kind of in the shade maybe a little bit of dappled light on her i just want to add kind of some light to her side a little bit so what I could do is I could uh, do a subject mask and I could bring exposure up, but I don't want it uniformly up. So what we're going to do is we're going to intersect this mask with a radial gradient. We'll go to the three dots, go to intersect mask, over and down to radial gradient. We'll draw out our radial gradient. You can see that it's starting to show that it's only affecting like the side of her like this. See how it's only affecting her? because we're intersecting the two masks like that and we could just bring it on a little more maybe like that and here's a little tip for using a radial gradient you see if you grab any of the handles and you move it in or out it's going to move the opposite side equally well, let's just say I just want to move this right hand handle and not that left hand handle well what I could do is hold the alter option key and alt a PC option if you have a Mac and it will allow you to just move one handle and not the other handle and that i think looks pretty good there's before and there's after and i could have put the radial gradient all by itself 
but it would affected the would have affected the background as well because I'm intersecting the radial gradient with the subject mask. It's only affecting where they overlap. So that's why you would do it. Let's do um, some haze again. Let's try something a little different. Let's say you selected the subject. Oh, I want to add haze. All you need to do is invert it. So click this little invert button, and it's the same thing as though you just selected the background. Then what you could do, go to the three dot. Well, before we do that, let's go down to effects and let's add that haze. You can see how it's uniform. Now we'll go to the three dots and we'll go to intersect mask width and we'll go to linear gradient and we'll pull down. And you can see how it looks a lot more natural. Here's a little tip when you're drawing a linear gradient. If you want it to be perfectly horizontal, hold in the shift key and it will lock it horizontal when you hold in the shift key. And you can see that now you have more natural looking haze. Now, uh, two, if you're drawing, let's say, from the left or right and you want it to be perfectly vertical, you can hold in the shift key as well and it will be perfectly vertical. So that's that. And one final one. Uh, I like this image a lot, but this area over here with this wood burning stove, it's kind of distracting to me. So I want to darken it. Now I could get a brush and brush over there and make it dark, but then I'd probably touch the model overlap on her and probably wouldn't look right. And I want it to be kind of gradual uh, because the area towards the window probably would be a little bit brighter than the area further away from the window. So what we'll do here is we'll open up masking and I'll select uh, the background. And then we're going to go to the tone and I'm going to bring exposure down. And actually that doesn't look too bad, but it's darkening the window as well. And maybe, and it's the, you know, I just don't want to do that. Maybe I want that window bright. So what we'll do is we'll bring it down pretty dark and we're going to intersect this mask again with the linear gradient. And then we'll come off from the side and draw it kind of down like this. And because it's, uh, it's not affecting the model at all, it's only affecting where the two masks overlap or intersect. That's why they call it intersecting masks. And there's that. So that's intersecting masks in Lightroom. Is it something you've used before? Let me know in the comments. I'm just curious how many people actually use it or is it something that is kind of new to you and you plan on using it moving forward? I'd like to know that as well. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.